The top ranked team in the nation resides in College Park. And today, the number one Maryland Terrapins welcome to town. Number 18, Princeton, for a marquee matchup. It's the Turks and the Tigers here on Big Ten Plus. Alongside Ben Franklin, my name is Ben Curtis. Thanks so much for choosing to make us a part of your Saturday afternoon. And we'll start with the hosts who are getting ready to go. championship in that 17 to 16 thriller in East Hartford. We'll switch over to the other side of things with Princeton. Good start to the season, 2-0, but against Monmouth and Binghamton, both unranked. This is an entirely different test on the road at number one. Well, this is the stretch, the start of a stretch for Princeton. They were five straight top 10 teams beginning of the college today. After this, they'll try to number three, Georgetown. Post number five, Rutgers. Post number 10, Penn. And then travel to number six, Yale. This is a brutal schedule for the Tigers. But a great test for them today to really see how they measure up in the landscape of college lacrosse. Yeah, you have to imagine Matt Babylon will learn a lot about his team here today before, as Ben mentioned, at Cooper Field at Georgetown. That is an incredibly difficult test back in the DMV. Next week, Princeton led by a couple of really solid players, junior and senior Alex Lusher and Chris Brown, have combined for 15 goals so far in the next Well, the interesting part is that they are better than both. They haven't played a whole lot recently. The idea of being canceled is a performance for the last year. This was the first time that the season place was played since they were 5-0 in 2020. And looking at one of the better teams in the country, looking like they can potentially win to hard for Experienced players, Brown and Slusher. Slusher had five goals versus Monmouth. He had three versus Binghamton. And Chris Brown was scored at least one. Think about this Princeton team. It's kind of odd, as you mentioned, that season last year, 2021. It was canceled in 2020. They looked like they were on the road to the final four Memorial Day weekend. They were 5 0. The number two team in the nation went shut down. And as a result, this is a Princeton team that hasn't lost a game across in over a thousand games. That's something, definitely something you want to do. Everyone's having a good time already in College Park. There's some fans out already. It's turned into a very sunny day. It was a cloudy morning in College Park. It's turned into a wonderful day. Get ready to go for the cross. As we are just about set to go here for the College Park Marathon. The host will be here in the Bubble Whites. It's a Princeton Bubble in their old black jerseys. Jack Henry Farmer is going to face off backs for Princeton. This is going to be a story to watch Princeton really short-handed at the face off against Cody Ginder, his dislocated elbow against Binghamton. Tyler Sandoval, who was excellent in the early stage of the season, is out in the COVID protocols. Farrah just got out of COVID protocols earlier this week. He hasn't practiced yet at all. It's going to be a difficult test for Princeton at the face off X. Maryland will look to gain their advantage there as well as in the attack where they have been so good. Luke Weirman at the X for Maryland. And we are underway from College Park. Terps and Tigers on Big Ten Plus. Appreciate you joining us here from Capital One Field at Maryland Stadium. And Weirman wins the opening faceoff, and Maryland will get into their opening attack. Offense that's averaging over 18 goals per game to start things off. And an early shot whizzes past the cage of Eric Peters. Faceoff's definitely going to be something to watch today. You saw Luke Weirman in the opening faceoff. Expect Virginia transfer Gavin Ty to also get a lot of looks at the X. Virginia transfer, he won 47% of his faceoffs last season for the Cavaliers. It's been a really good one two tandem between Weirman and Ty in the early stages. Kyle Long with a nice wing dodge right out in front, and that one just missed wide. Keegan, Keegan Khan, Khan yeah. has come over from Villanova and has just made such an immediate impact for the Terps. We have a number of impact transfers that 
John Tillman has brought in to go along with a good core of returners from last season when, as we've already mentioned, they went all the way to the national championship game. All the way inside in the first goal of the day, there's one of the transfers, it's Jonathan Donville. And Maryland on the board first. The Cornell transfer, Jonathan Donville, very familiar with these Princeton Tigers, the number one overall pick in the National Lacrosse League draft in 2021, decided to come to Maryland. And he makes it look really easy as he gets the nice little shovel pass from Anthony DeMeo. And really nobody there to stop him. You give Jonathan Donville space, he's going to make you pay for it just as he did there. Just went right past Bo Pedersen and all the way to the crease and was able to get Maryland on the board first. As the ensuing faceoff will keep things with Maryland. That's certainly, as we mentioned, something to keep an eye on in the early stages, especially if Maryland gets all the possession, it's going to be very difficult for Princeton to come all the way back. Weirman's going to have a shot. He's going to score. That's the third of the season for the faceoff man, and Maryland firing on all cylinders in the first 45 seconds. Two goals in 45 seconds, not a bad way to begin the afternoon for the Terrapins. It's so interesting how... Maryland uses their faceoff men so well. Gavin Ty scored in the opener against High Point. He just kind of took it himself. And here, Luke Weirman, just a rocket right past Eric Peters. Fourth point of the season already for the faceoff man. As the ground ball fight is on, it's going to be picked up and won by Princeton. Maryland's goal comes and the Tigers will have the chance to the clear and get their attack in motion for the first time. When Princeton has the ball, I think they can expect them to hold on to it for as long as they possibly can, considering that the face-offs they are going to be a weak point for the Tigers. They'd have to imagine the fewer number of possessions in this game, the better. They're going to want to slow the game down a lot. It's a Princeton offense that really, really fired on all cylinders against both Monmouth and Binghamton. 22 goals against each, but... A totally different task here today. There's Chris Brown, and a shot comes in a good save from Logan McNaney, the junior from New York, who's averaging under 10 goals allowed in the early stages of this season. And was able to answer the call for his first test of the day. Under Logan 10 McNaney's seconds for Maryland to clear. Go ahead, Ben. Logan McNaney's just so good back there for Maryland. He averaged giving up just under 10 goals last year, and was one of the unsung heroes of Maryland's run of the national championship game last season. Even scored a goal last season from about 70 yards out against Ohio State that made it on SportsCenter. Such a good player. Big energizer for this Maryland Terrapins team, and the last line of defense has been excellent so far in 2022. Nice pass inside and a good save there from McNaney's counterpart, Peters, who just was able to get a foot to it, it looked like. And now Peters can initiate the Princeton clear. Princeton has cleared the ball pretty well so far this season, about 89%, but they've forced their opponents into some really difficult situations. In the first two games, Princeton's opponents have been clearing at about 56%. They've been able to cause a lot of turnovers, but they're the ones who turn the ball right back over there. Fight is on, and Princeton comes up with it back. Ground balls, 50-50 balls, also going to have to be an area, Ben, where Princeton excels if they're going to stay in this one. Yeah, Maryland averaging about 33 ground balls per game. Their opponents, 31. The Tigers, 42. But again, you have to keep in mind the teams that they played in the first two weeks. Much different test here in the last weekend of February. Here's Chris Brown with his seven goals and seven assists. Over to goal line extended for Ronda. Maryland forcing everything to the perimeter right now. 40 seconds to shoot, plenty of time for the Tigers. Works back to behind X. Slusher running the show there right now. The junior Slusher is able to get goal side, but once again, Maryland pushing the Tigers' attack back. Now the shot comes in about shot scores. Sam English first on the board for Princeton. Nice set here from the Tigers to get it past Logan McNaney. Looked like they were rattled a little bit early. Two goals in 45 seconds given up. But a nice response here, maybe calming the nerves of the Tigers a little bit. It's a big challenge today for them, but certainly one they are capable for. Third goal of the season 
for the Canadian. And Ben, the longer that this stays a one or a two goal game for Princeton, even if they're on the losing side of that, the better you feel if you're Matt Madelon and this Princeton team. Oh, they're going to feel great if it's, if it's a one goal game, two goal game. They just can't let themselves get too far behind. If, they feel, if they're down one or two goals for most of the afternoon, they're going to feel like they have a real shot to win this game. And another ground ball picked up by Princeton initially, and the 50-50 fight is on, and it's picked up once again by the Tigers, doing those 50-50 battles that they need to do, but John Geppert with a nice stick to get it away. And it'll fall back to Bubba Fairman, who seems to be in the right place at the right time every time Always. for Maryland. And now Maryland's offense can go to work once again. Fairman, the fifth-year student out of Sandy, Utah, coming back for that extra year. And so vital to everything Maryland does. Won't necessarily show up on the scoreboard every time. But making those little impact plays to change games like the one right there. Here's the goal scorer, Don Viller. One of them at least. Anthony DeMeo gets a touch to it. Here's Logan Wisnowskis. Haven't said his name too much in the early stages of this one. The chance to make a little bit of history today. We'll get back to that. A little bit later on in this broadcast. Long plays catch with DeMeo and now gets goal side once again. Finds Wisnowskis. Oh, he thought about it. But a wing dodge gets him back behind the cage. Under 30 seconds for Maryland to shoot. Donville tried to link up with DeMeo. It was over his head and Princeton with a nice stop on the defensive end. They needed that. A lot of passing there for Maryland. Logan Wisnowskis might have had a shot there from his left if he wanted it, but chose not to take it. Nice too movement. much movement for Maryland. Nice move from Bo Peterson to ensure the clear. And now Princeton with a chance to tie things up. A little bit more than five minutes gone by in this first quarter. Thanks so much for hanging out with us here from College Park. One of the games of the weekend in college lacrosse was a loaded slate this weekend. But two top 20 teams, including the number one team in the nation. Here is Christian Ronda trying to even things up. He'll have a shot once again. McNaney was able to parry it away. Logan McNaney has been up to the task in the early stages of this one. Sure Second has. save of the day, and they were both really good ones. Once again, the ride coming on, though, for Princeton being aggressive. Terps able to clear, though. Now Maryland coming the other way, looking to go in transition. Couldn't quite find Owen Probilski. Transfer from Villanova, and Princeton coming the other way once more. Good this chance game. there. Probilski catches that. That might be a goal. Really starting to open up as that one hits the crossbar. It was English once again as Princeton was off and running. And the goalie's best friend coming up big there. But Princeton, after getting punched in the mouth in the first 45 seconds, has really grown into this game. And they have the chance to tie it up once again here. Brown's able to recover. Wing dodge to get back to X. And now the shot will come in a goal. But first a whistle, and it's not going to count. Wipe the goal off the board. It remains 2-1. to one. And a sigh of relief for some Maryland fans, to be sure. As Domdell is able to clear it all the way along for Jake Higgins, who will wait for some company. Here is Kyle Long. Three goals, four assists in the first three games. The senior out of Pennsylvania. And Anthony DeMeo, who is into his fifth year. This is a veteran core in the attack for Maryland. To go along with a couple of transfers. Inside for Wisnowskis. All he needs is a second to get it in and out of his pocket. And it's in the back of the net. This is such a good pass from Eric Molliver. Finding Wisnowskis on the back door. And he just scores goals in bunches. We'll take one more look at it. It was a really well-developed play, all starting with that wing dodge from Kyle Long to open things up. And Wisnowskis only needs one moment. And as you mentioned, an excellent assist from Eric Molliver, his fourth helper of the season. And now Logan Wisnowskis draws even all-time in second place in the Maryland all-time points list with... A player that many Maryland fans will be 
more than familiar with, Matt Rambo, one of the all-time greats. Next point for Wisnowskis, and he's all alone in second place all-time. Everyone chasing Jared Bernhardt and his 290 points. Rambo and Wisnowskis now level with 257. And the Maryland native, Wisnowskis, who started off at Syracuse, didn't play for the Orange, came back home and continues to etch himself into the record books. Now it's Molliver who gets goal side. He'll have a shot. Good save from Peters. And initially was able to get the rebound, but Wisnowskis picks it back up, finds Molliver. Another nice save from Peters. He has been active in the early going despite the three goals allowed. Two shots from Oliver, both very good looks, but very good saves by Eric Peters. So Maryland will re-trigger the offense with a minute to shoot. Fourteen goals against Syracuse, twenty against Loyola of Maryland, twenty-one in the season opener against High Point. Here is Wisnowskis wearing that fabled number one jersey that so many Maryland greats have won, worn in the past, rather. Getting pushed to the ground that time was Jack Chorus. And Maryland will be able to go once more. Terps with a two-goal lead at the moment. Goals from Wisnowskis, Donville, and Weirman. And here's Keegan Kahn getting the shot off, and once again, Peters there to answer the call. Three very good saves in the span of about a minute there from Eric Peters. He's got four on the day, the senior from Highlands Ranch, Colorado. Started all five games in that 2020 season. And of course, as we mentioned in the open, in case you're just joining us, the Ivy League canceled all sports in 2021, including the spring season. So this Princeton team never got the chance to take the field in real competition last year. So it is a work to get back into the swing of things for the Tigers and Matt Madelon with two games in the early part of the season against teams that are not ranked and now five teams in a row coming up on the schedule inside the top 10 as Ben mentioned. Here come the Tigers once more on the attack. Skip House from Brown is intercepted. Geppert trying to keep it alive but he stepped out of bounds and so it will stay with Princeton. John Geppert himself has been very active as we get another whistle. And we will wait for things to proceed. Princeton's head coach, Matt Madelon, into his sixth season at the helm of the Tigers, 34-20. and 20. And, of course, Coach Michael Sowers, the Princeton all-time leading scorer, one of the better players in this part of the decade, this part of the century in college lacrosse. No longer on this team, though. He was such a good player, so fun to watch, made it look so easy. Part of that team in 2020 that helped Princeton get to the number two ranking before everything shut down. And you have to wonder what if in that 2020 season, the Ivy League was absolutely loaded. You think about Yale, Cornell, which Jonathan Donville was on. That was as good of a league as you'll find that year. Unfortunately, never got the chance to crown a champion. Here's Chris Brown. Dodging down the wings. He's going to have to turn back, though. And a whistle will send the ball the other way. Nice defense there from Maryland. Not letting Princeton get in. That's that's really one of the strong suits of this Maryland team is the defenders so far only giving up 10 goals per game. Maryland has been so good both this season and historically when allowing fewer than 10 goals. It's been the magic number on the defensive side of things. And they certainly are more than prolific, scoring 10 goals themselves on this side of the ball. Jonathan Donville with his nine goals on the season now. Gets it back for Khan. He's been held off the board so far today. Does have three shots, though. He'll give it up for Anthony DeMeo. Quick passing for Maryland in this offensive sequence. Long all the way inside, sharp angle shot. And went past the cage, and Maryland backs it up first with Molliver. Long can go 0-60 to 60 real quick, as you just saw there, as Molliver gets goal side. Under 30 seconds for the Terps to shoot. Donville gets into the crease and scores. He's got two. 
That was all Jonathan Donville right there. Did it all himself. No help. Making it look really easy. He goes to his left and cuts back towards the middle. Terrific goal here from Jonathan Donville. As we mentioned, certainly no stranger to facing off against Ivy League opposition, the transfer from Cornell. He's got 10 goals on the season now in Maryland with their largest lead of the day. It's three. Ensuing faceoff is won by Princeton. Important faceoff win early on in this first quarter to keep things at least at arm's length. The Tigers will wait for their reinforcements. In case you're just joining us, we mentioned the struggles that Princeton has just in terms of personnel at the face-off X. Their top two players, Kobe Ginder and Tyler Sandoval, both out, one with a dislocated elbow and one because of COVID protocols. The Tigers able to work it back to X, so it's really all going to be up to Jack Henry Vara today at the X. If they lose Jack Henry Vara, they're in some real trouble. Princeton was holding tryouts this week just in case something were to happen to Vara for faceoffs, and they didn't like anybody they saw. So if there was to be somebody to take over, it would be Bo Peterson, junior out of Park City, Utah, who was a faceoff man in high school. Here's a shot and a goal quickly. And Princeton right back within two. It's English once again. Nice little drive to the goal here from Sam English. Princeton putting up a good fight here in the first quarter. And a nice pass from Tommy Barnes as well. But English, yeah, he went right past Matt Rahill. That's not something you can say no, all that often yeah. either. Matt Rahill, one of the better defenders in the Big Ten and in the country. Roman Puglisi a little bit late on the help defense. And Sam English with a pair of goals early on in this one in Princeton. And we said at the opening of this game that they might have some trouble at the X, but they've held their own to be sure. 3-3 in faceoffs. Yeah, they've gone right down the middle, 50-50, and a big scrum for the ball on right in the middle of the field. Slusher initially came away with it, and now it's Maryland that will. Brett Maycar able to send it all the way long, and all alone is Roman Puglisi, and he buries it. Oh, nobody picked up number eight in the white jersey, and Maryland makes him pay for it. This is almost too easy. Roman Puglisi just kind of got behind everybody. There was a huge scrub for the ball right around midfield. And Brett Maycar with a terrific pass, falling to the ground as he did it. And Roman Puglisi gives Maryland their fifth of the first quarter. Timeout on the field, so we'll step aside with just over two minutes to go in the first quarter. Maryland up by three on Big Ten Plus. Maryland has a 5-2 lead over the number 18 team in the nation, the Princeton Tigers. One good sign, though, so far, Ben. Princeton actually outdueling Maryland at the faceoff X right now, 4-3, to three, despite their personnel troubles. And Luke Weirman still out there taking faceoffs for the Terps. We thought we would see Gavin Ty pretty soon as Weirman wins this one here. So level things up at four apiece. Should mention Jack Henry Vara was a two-time first-team All-American out of high school in Medfield, Massachusetts. And certainly holding his own here so far today in College Park. Giving his team a chance. Certainly all you can ask for if you're Matt Madelon and the Tigers. you got to give him a lot of credit. Yeah, this is not an easy task coming into College Park and playing Maryland. But Jack Henry Vara doing a great job. Bubba Fairman trying to get in towards the cage. He shoots another save from Peters. He has been spot on yeah. in the first quarter and can't really say any of the goals allowed. You can tag to be his fault. Yeah, he's doing all that he can to keep his team in the game. Maryland's just so much firepower. There's so many players that can beat you. Five goals allowed, five saves, though, for Peters. Now Princeton's offense will try to get going in the last minute of this first quarter. Shot clock and game clock about the same. And Princeton can hold for if they want the final shot or the next best shot. 
at the very least. Alexander Vardaro working on the ball now, the junior. Back it comes for Brown. Dodges right down the middle, gets it over onto the left wing. Here is English, who has scored both of the Tigers' goals. Gets it inside. He's got a first quarter hat trick. All Sam English in the opening frame for the visitors. And they're back within two. Yeah, the Canadian with three goals in the first quarter for Princeton. And he put a little English on that one. Had Up and under. He had two goals against Binghamton. Those were the only two goals he had coming into this game, and he's outpaced his season total in the first quarter in this one, and he's the big reason why the Tigers are right in the thick of things with 27 seconds to go in the first quarter. Weirman's able to win it to Higgins, and now Maryland can come with one more opportunity in this first quarter. Right down the middle, a shot is saved right into the pocket of Eric Peters, and now what can Princeton have in the final 15 seconds? They have to go quick. It's Slusher trying to spin free. He's got five seconds to get a shot off, and Maryland hounding him, and the Tigers aren't going to get a shot off. Good final stand on the defensive side of things for Maryland, but Princeton right up for the task, down just two as we head into the second quarter of play. Excellent ball game on Big Ten+. Plus. or Maryland rather with a 5-3 to three lead over the Princeton Tigers, but then Princeton's right in the swing of things right now, down just two. They've been holding their own at the faceoff X, and Sam English has all three goals. Yeah, that's the thing that's keeping Princeton in this game is they're winning some faceoffs. So it's my, Maryland's only won uh, one more 5-4 to four before this one, but the Tigers are really holding their own. Got to give them credit. They're putting up a good fight. Two teams switch sides for the second quarter. Maryland now going from left to right on your screen. Princeton from right to left. That's coming right down the middle and almost getting a shot off. That time was Jake Stevens. Nice back check to prevent the clean shot opportunity. But Princeton there to back it up and with a chance to get right back to within one. So we start the second quarter of play. He's Ben Reitman. I'm Ben Curtis. Appreciate you joining us here on this Saturday afternoon for a top-tier college lacrosse game here in College Park. Tommy Barnes trying to initiate the offense. Sam English has all three goals for Princeton. Donville has two to lead Maryland. Princeton looking for something back behind X. And getting it right out in front as a flag flies. Delayed penalty going to come up here against Maryland. And it's going to stay with the Tigers, it looks like, and now we'll get the call. So an EMO opportunity for the Tigers here and a chance to get right back to within one. 30-second penalty coming up against Brett Maycar. Four goals on the EMO situation already for Princeton. In their first two games, they were 80%, four for five. A very efficient EMO. And they'll look to get themselves right back within one goal in the first minute or so of this second quarter of play. Waiting for the referees okay, and now the referees are going to have a conversation. Well, we said at the opening of this game, Ben, that the longer it stayed a one- or two-goal game, the better Princeton was going to feel, and that's kind of what we're seeing. Princeton really grew into the game after Maryland scored two goals in the first 45 seconds. Yeah, that is what we've seen, and Maryland got off to such that, that such quick start. Princeton was able to score one, maybe kind of settle them down a little bit, but they look like they're not phased at all by this challenge, especially in the face-off department where it's 5-5. Five, five. I'm interested to see why we haven't seen Gavin Ty yet, if there's something going on with him. And we just got another penalty called here. Ajax Zapatello is going to the box as well for 30 seconds, so it's going to be 6-on-4 for Princeton here and a golden opportunity for the Tigers right now. Yeah, they have to capitalize on this. Maryland only with four defenders. It was a dead ball foul, it looked like, unless they were able to catch Zapatello for something else when that ball was still live. It was a push on Zapatello, apparently. The second penalty was on Maryland's number 36, Ajax 
So both Maycar and Zapatella will have to sit this one out. And Matt Madelon with a huge chance for his Tigers. John Tillman still pleading his case. I don't think he's going to win any argument he can have. So six on four for the Tigers for 30 seconds. And here we go. Slusher will start things off. Works all the way around the horn to goal line extended. Back up top for Vardaro. 17 seconds on the double EMO. And Brown is forced all the way wide. Now here's English back behind the cage. Slusher all the way around once again looking for the opening. And here it comes for Vardaro. Has a shot and scores. Alexander Vardaro with a cannon. And Princeton's back within one. Not a lot Maryland could have done there being two men down. Princeton did a very good job of capitalizing on this op on this opportunity. Anything else but a goal would have been demoralizing. And they're able to get a rocket from the stick of Alexander Vardaro. Fourth of the season for the junior from New York. And Princeton once again back within one. And credit the assist on that excellent skip pass from Alex Slusher. Going all the way across the middle of the field as Maryland wins the face off and looks to move quickly to get it right back. Wisnowskis all alone in second place in the Maryland all-time points list. Well, it didn't take very long for Maryland to answer that goal. And who else would score it but Logan Wisnowskis. He's absolutely everywhere. Nice job by Luke Weirman running down the faceoff. Daniel Maltz with a nice pass. And this is just so unfair. This is this shot isn't even close to the net, and Wisnowski just puts it in. He's absolutely a cheat code. 258 career points in a Maryland jersey. He's past Matt Rambo, and only the great Jared Bernhardt is ahead of Logan Wisnowskis in the all-time list. Got to figure he's getting a text from his former teammate. And now Division II college football champion. Oh, wow, was he good at Fair State this year. Winning the national championship, showing he can do it in a couple of different sports, Jared Bernhardt. And you have to imagine Wisnowskis is going to have a decent shot to get there. He's 32 away with most of the season still to go. He's got a great chance, you would think, Especially as long as he stays healthy. Keeps up at the pace that he has been at. Two goals on the day for Wisnowskis, two more for Donville. One for Roman Puglisi, one for Luke Weirman. And that's how Maryland has six to Princeton's four. Shot whizzes past the cage of Peters. And we've talked about Eric Peters a little bit already, but you still can't point to a goal and say, man, that was one Peters should have had. He's been excellent yeah. despite the six goals allowed. He's got six saves as well, and a big reason why Princeton is still in this ball game. Yeah, like I said, he's doing all that he can. Him and uh, Jack Henry Vara, tough assignments for them, but they're really holding their own. Battle for the loose ball here back behind the cage. It's going to be won by the Tigers. Andrew Song all over things. Back behind his own defensive crease. And a good clear as well for the Tigers. And now Princeton can once again try to get right back within one. Matt Madelon's team just not going away here in College Park. Pedersen will back things up and... Start once again. Gets it over to English, who already has a hat trick. A nice move from English to evade John Gepper. 40 seconds to shoot for Princeton. Plenty of time. Here's Christian Rondo, who's been held pretty quiet today. Bartero, the most recent goal scorer. Back to X for Slusher. English is quickly double teamed, and that will free things up on the weak side. But an errant pass that time just over the head of the intended target. And Maryland let off the hook there. Yeah, that's what Princeton can't do is have careless turnovers like that. It's their sixth of the game. It's an errant pass from Chris Brown. As once again, a little bit of a ride coming on right now for Princeton trying to force the turnover. Maryland with eight seconds to get the clear off. 
And they launch it all the way down the field looking for Keegan Kahn. And he lost his stick trying to handle it and do force the turnover, Princeton. That's a maybe an errant pass there from Jake Higgins. I understand the idea, but it doesn't seem very necessary. The Terps were running out of time, but still had maybe six or seven seconds to get it across the midfield line. Now Princeton is able to clear. Princeton seven for eight on their clears. Maryland four for five, so both teams have been relatively efficient, but the turnover starting to stack up. Princeton with six, Maryland with five. And as you can see, Maryland with double the shots on goal that Princeton has, but credit to Eric Peters, as we've already mentioned. And this Princeton defense for keeping themselves in the ball game. When can they make that run, though, to level things up or take the lead? Still plenty of time, obviously, 10 minutes to go in the second quarter. English with all the confidence in the world right now. That hit Fairman on the way through, and now Maryland looking to go in transition. Clearing all the way down is Brett Maycar, and now Maryland's offense can get going. Bubba Fairman looked like he just got his body in the way there that time to block the shot. That's a veteran presence. Doing everything you can to make sure it doesn't get through to goal. Can't feel very good. Getting back goal side that time, though, were the Terps and didn't get the clean shot off. Keegan Kahn unable to really trouble Eric Peters' net. Yeah, Kahn's kind of been a non-factor today so far. Something didn't really expect to see, but Princeton's done a good job of keeping him in check. Three shots, but none of them have found the back of the net. Lusher able to find Sean Cameron. And here's Cameron, goal line extended. Back for Slusher. Gets topside. Maryland forces it back behind X for Barnes. Now here's Cameron, whips a shot, didn't get through though. And a good hit put on Sean Cameron that time. And Maryland will have the chance to clear. Maryland using the physicality to get the ball back, but they need to get it across the midfield line in six seconds. That's exactly what Anthony DeMeo does. And now the Terps can move on offense. DeMeo with a shot that was always rising high. Race to back it up is going to be won by Keegan Kahn. And he'll stay with the Terps. There's Daniel Maltz, a name we also haven't said all that much today. This Maryland attack just so deep that they can still have a productive day offensively without getting to one of their major scorers. Maltz was third on the team in goals and points last season. He's been held pretty quiet today and this season. He's on the ball now. Gets it over for Donville, who's got a pair. Kyle Long with a wing dodge. Gets the pass off to Wisnowskis. Couldn't find anyone right in front. DeMeo picks it up, and once again, Peters is there. Squared up to the shooter as the flag flies. Yeah, this tough break there for Princeton, but a good save by Eric Peters. Call looks like it's going to go against the Tigers. And an EMO chance coming up now for the Terps. Their first of the day. Four for ten in the MO situation so far this season. You got to capitalize here. Maryland's still sitting on that two-goal lead, but Princeton's just still hanging around. It's going to be a one-minute call coming up against Marquez White. So a big chance for Maryland to get back to that three-goal lead, which is their largest of the day. It was four to one that they were able to get the lead up to. Also five to two, but Lead has not been larger than three at any point so far today with 7.17 to go in the second quarter. The 
a spot where you have to imagine Logan Wisnowskis will have a big impact on how the EMO runs. And it's also a space where you've seen Daniel Malt score quite a few times. He scored on the EMO in the season opener against High Point. We'll see if he gets himself into that dangerous position, as he so often does in the slot. As he kicks off the EMO, Maryland works it all the way around, back behind the crease. Here is Wisnowskis. Finds a DeMeo stepping into one, and it was rising high. Maryland's able to back it up. Donville was there. Boy, DeMeo let that one rip. Going low to high and unable to find the frame. So 45 seconds on the EMO. Back behind the crease, it comes once again. Wisnowskis, extra pass comes. And now right down the middle, a shot and a goal. Owen Murphy's on the board here today. Eighth of the season for the transfer from Johns Hopkins. This is such good ball movement by Maryland. The passing here is just so pristine, so clean, quick and easy. You see Keegan Kahn, DeMeo. Everybody really getting involved in a nice little bounce shot there for Owen Murphy. And that's exactly what you want to see. If you're John Tillman, the ball not getting stuck in any one person's stick. And Maryland able to convert. Penalty was non-releasable. So the 33 seconds remain, and Maryland with a chance to add a little bit more. Face-off initially won by Weirman. Battle for the ground ball is on. Bubba Fairman going to the ground to try to pick it up. As the battle remains, and it looks like Princeton's going to be able to take it away, and that's a big moment for yeah. the Tigers to be able to stem the tide of their shorthandedness. Penalty's now over, and that was an errant pass that time. Not entirely sure who it was intended for, but regardless, a unnecessary turnover, an unforced error by the Tigers, and they can't have too many of those here today. Yeah. Ben. Talked about it earlier. If Princeton wants to win this game, they have to play clean, and they've had a couple careless turnovers in the last couple of minutes. Seventh turnover of the day for the Tigers. And Maryland is able to clear. With six minutes to go in the second quarter of play, Maryland in the driver's seat, but not quite pulling away. Eight saves already for Eric Peters. He's nearly halfway to his career high, which was 17 against Dartmouth, of course, in conference play. Here's Murphy again, getting it back to X. Murphy with a behind-the-back pass, and Wisnowskis goes behind the back himself. Couldn't find the back of the net, though. And a push will keep things with Maryland. Boy, that would have been something else if Logan Wisnowskis had been able to finish that goal. Keegan Kahn had a behind-the-back goal in the season opener against High Point. Yeah, that was that, that was, was something. something. Else. That was absolutely nuts. And Maryland's starting to get a bit creative. Do you think they work on that in practice? I would have to imagine it's one of the more fun drills to be <laughs> able to do as once again Peters is able to make the save. Owen Murphy tried to go low to high, and that is save number nine for Eric Peters. He is some kind of locked He's in right now. He's having a terrific game. He should feel really good that he is keeping his team in this game. They would not be only three down if it wasn't for the play of Eric Peters. Other players having an excellent day is Sam English, who just was able to get the clear with a nice swim move. And allow Princeton to start up their offense. Three goals from English, one more for Vardaro, and that is all the offense that Princeton's had with four and a half to go in the second quarter. Quick moving, energetic, everything you can ask for for a top 20 college lacrosse game. This game has lived up to the hype so far. You certainly imagine Alex Slusher will have something to say before it's over as he gets it off. Goal line extended now back up top. Barnes right down the middle. Here is English already with his hat trick. Skip pass. And with a dozen to shoot, Princeton has to initiate something fairly soon. They get goal side and another good save by McNaney. Battle is on, and it looks like it's going to go the other way. Boy, that's such good defense there from Maryland. That was incredible 
forcing late in the shot clock. There was absolutely no shot at all on that possession for the Tigers. And good hustle from both Ray Hill and McNaney yeah. to get to the byline. Yeah, it was. And ensure Maryland gets possession. Once again, the ride coming on, but Maryland able to clear. And here's Jack Chorus starting things up. Maryland looking for their largest lead of the game. Jonathan Donville right back onto the field and onto the ball. Now here's Kyle Long. Along with a nice wing dodge. Skip pass to Wisnowskis, buries it. He's got a first half hat trick, and Maryland has its largest lead of the day. It almost feels like there are three guarantees in life. Death, taxes, and Logan Wisnowskis hat tricks. He's got 15 goals in about three and a half games. Is that good? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's okay. pretty good, Ben. Just making sure. What a special player Logan Wisnowskis is. And he's one of those players where, you know, you can dive into all of the details and the numbers and you the stats. You don't need to. You can just watch him. You get one more look at that pass from Kyle Long. Just too much time and space. How does that go in? It's just, it's baffling to me how he does these things. One of those players that you can really just say you're lucky to be able to witness as much as you have. And Maryland will try to get as much from him the rest of this season as possible. It's a it's special still, player. It still baffles me that a team with Logan Wisnowski and Jaron Bernhardt did not win the national championship. Uh, that really was a testament to how good that Baffling. Virginia team was as well. Yep. I was as dominant as they come in the ACC. Coming right back the other way, though. Guess who? It's Sam English again. He's got four. It almost feels like every time... Maryland scores, Princeton goes right down the field and scores, and then anytime Princeton scores, Maryland goes right down the field again. And then we kind of had these little lull moments, but great response from Sam English, fourth of the game. He had two in the combined two games coming into today, and he's doubled that with two and a half minutes still to go in the first half. He has been absolutely fantastic, the Canadian. Coming to College Park and making a big-time impact. And still one or two more chapters to be written in this first half. Plenty of time for either Maryland to open up the lead further or Princeton to get even closer. Jeffords able to pick up the loose ball. Ride continuing to come for Princeton. The mandate has been clear. Press, press, press for Matt Madelon's team. Maryland able to break it and able to clear. You mentioned potentially a fatigue factor for Princeton. They just played Binghamton. On February the 22nd, that was on Tuesday, so a very quick turnaround to this game for the Tigers, but it doesn't look like it's having a big effect so far. They have been running step for step with the Terps every way in this first half. Long onto his left hand, kick saved by Peters. Wow. And now Princeton looking to hustle the other way. Brown over to Slusher. Getting out to his right hand and scoring. Oh, you knew it wouldn't be long before Alex Slusher put his stamp on the game. And he gets Princeton to a half dozen with a buck and a half to go in the first half. Five goals versus Monmouth. Three goals versus Binghamton. The junior out of Portland, Oregon, Alex Slusher. Just keeps Princeton hanging around. Nice little duck move on Ajax Apatello and able to get it past Logan McNaney. Princeton still just hanging around. Maryland has been unable to pull away in the first half. Five against Monmouth, a hat trick against Binghamton, and now one here against Maryland. Timeout on the field. We will step aside when we come back the final 100 seconds of what has been a fantastic first half of college lacrosse on Big Ten+. Plus. microphones on Monday night for basketball. We got air guitars today. Remind me, did you enjoy the Taylor Swift night for Maryland oh, basketball? Ben? Absolutely. <laughs> it was a fun event that Maryland men's basketball was able to put on. They were red out. And a big win. That was an important win to be sure. Maryland men's lacrosse looking for a big win here to get to 4-0. They're facing plenty of pushback from this Princeton team that has simply not let Maryland 
really get away. The lead has stayed within two for much of this game. It was four briefly with a Wisnowskis goal, but goals from Sam English and Alex Lesher have brought things right back to within arm's length. With a minute to go, Maryland looking to add to their tally. Here's DeMeo. He's going to have a shot. Well, you never have to ask Anthony DeMeo to shoot twice. <laughs> He's had a couple of those, just rockets that have been really wide, but you know what they say, shoot or shoot. Maryland cannot hold for the final shot, about a 16-second difference between game clock and shot clock. As Donville gets to the goal line, extended at a really athletic move. Oh, how Donville got himself through the traffic and got the ball into the back of the net, unsure, but he's got himself a hat trick, and Maryland's lead back up to three. Jonathan Donville, so athletic, just goes up. Kind of dives and sneaks under. Second of the game for the Cornell transfer. I mean, this is just such a good move. And both the strength and the agility to get past one defender and then stay out of the restricted area and still get the shot yeah. off. Excellent move from the graduate student who has been a big help for Maryland on offense, the transfer. One more chance perhaps for Maryland. Weirman coming right down the middle. Weirman missing just wide. That's the exact same thing that Gavin Ty did against High Point. Just went right down and scored. Luke Weirman trying to replicate it. He's already got one today. And now Maryland can hold for the final shot of the first half if they want. About 20 seconds to go. Sharps do still have both of their timeouts. Princeton out of timeouts. But it looks like John Tillman will... Let the final 12 seconds go and see if Maryland can get one more opportunity. In the waning moments, shot goes just wide. That time from Jack Chorus. Princeton there to back it up, and with three seconds left, that is going to just about be that for the first half of play. A really entertaining first half that sees Maryland with a three-goal lead. Logan Nowskis with three as he moves into second place all-time the Maryland points list. Jonathan Dondo with a first-half hat trick, but Sam English with four goals for Princeton. And Eric Peters with 11 first half saves keeps this a ball game. We head into the break on Big Ten Plus. Number one, Maryland with nine. Number 18, Princeton with six. The senior from Massachusetts doing the work for Princeton. Luke Weirman's getting the majority of the looks today for Maryland. It was usually a a tandem of Gavin Ty and Weirman in the first three games, but this is going to be the 16th faceoff that Luke Weirman's take. Gavin Ty has just taken two. And Weirman's able to win that one. And Maryland will get the ball first on offense in the second half. Largest lead of the day was four. It was eight to four for Maryland, courtesy of a Nowskis goal. But Princeton, as keeping with the story of this game, able to get things back to within a reasonable margin. And we'll see what they do on the defensive th side of things. As DeMeo, I think that rang off of some iron. It's going to stay with Maryland, though. DeMeo with that quick step just to give himself a little bit of separation, though. And almost was able to put one past Peters. Here's Molliver, bounce shot that goes wide. Once again, Maryland there first to back it up. Molliver has been fairly quiet as well. The one assist for the sophomore from Atlanta. Here's Donville, who has been anything but quiet. Hat trick in the first half for him. He'll give it up to DeMeo. Now here's Kyle Long with all that speed. Nice pass towards DeMeo and another save by Peters. Rebound, though, score. Guess who? Number one, Logan Wisnowskis. The ball just finds it. This is off a deflection. It's off of a very good save by Eric Peters. As you see this kind of dump off, it's a, it's a good look here from DeMeo and the save by Peters. But the ball just finds Logan Wisnowskis off of the deflection. Not a lot Eric Peters could do there. Fourth of the day for Logan Wisnowskis, and that ties the largest lead of the day once again for Maryland as they are first into the double figures. 
another face-off win for Maryland as they start to get a bit of separation in that category for really the first time today. Here's Wisnowski gets that goal line extended. Pass intended for Molliver. Didn't get all the way through, though. Battle for the ball by the byline is won by the goalie, Peters. And he's just able to scoop it out of harm's way. I was able to find a teammate in Slusher initially, but then Maryland's able to take it right back. That's going to be a foul on Princeton there, a push. Delayed penalty coming up as Maryland was able to find Maycar, who clears. And now Bubba Fairman can start things up at the top. Here is Fairman dodging down the right wing, getting back to X. Gets topside, but continuously being hounded by his defender, that's English. Here's Jack Brennan. His name we haven't said too much today, part of this reserve attack squad that is so, so deep for Maryland. Oliver has to circle back, 35 seconds to shoot for Maryland, plenty of time. Still with the delayed call pending. Here's Wisnowskis, it opens up for him, and once again, Peters is there to square up to him. And now we'll get the call. Wisnowskis close to his fifth there, another good save by Eric Peters. The shots are just staggering right now. Maryland just about double Princeton, 29 to 14. So Maryland will move into the EMO. With about two and a half minutes gone by in the first, or in the third quarter of play rather. 32nd EMO chance coming for Maryland. Quick ball movement for Maryland. To be sure, the patent of this John Tillman EMO. As Donville gets the goal line extended. Wisnowskis works it all the way around and Stop me if you've heard this one. Saved by Eric Peters. Some kind of locked in. Hey, what a game he's having. And he absolutely has to have to keep Princeton in this game. And the Tigers able to clear. And they'll get back to even strength. Here's Brown finding Vardaro. He's got a goal today. Four for English, one for Slusher, one for Vardaro. That's been the six for Princeton. The Tigers certainly don't need to be in any sort of hurry with plenty of time still to play in this ball game. Princeton has not led yet today, though. After Maryland was able to get the first two goals within 45 seconds of the opening faceoff. Here's Slusher finding Tommy Barnes. Now Christian Ronda. His eight points on the day, on the season rather. Inside for Brown, bounce shot and scores. Oh, he said coming out of the second half that Christian, Chris Brown is going to have to get himself on the board and it takes under four minutes in the third quarter for him to do so. And the streak for Chris Brown moves to 33 games in a row with a goal, little bounce shot under... Logan McNaney, not much he could do there. Princeton cuts it back to three. And that's the continuing story from the first half into the second. Every time it looks like Maryland is going to pull away and really put the pedal to the metal to get away from Princeton. Tigers say not so fast, and once yep. again, right back to within a reasonable margin. Maryland wins the faceoff, though, coming right down the middle as Weirman tries to pass from Oliver, who was waiting for him to shoot. And it's going to go the other way. Maryland not quite on the same page there that time, and it cost them a possession. Ronda able to clear for Princeton, and early on in the second half, a big opportunity for them to get right back to within two. McNaney with seven goals allowed to four saves. Eric Peters with 10 goals allowed, 14 saves as Maryland takes it the other way. With, uh, Puglisi, rather, able to find Molliver. And a turnover that could haunt the Tigers. As a pass back behind the cage was unable to be possessed cleanly. It falls right into the stick of Kyle Long. Fortuitous bounce for Long. 
as the pressure continues to come from him from Pace Billings. And we'll work it into a little bit more open space and now can start up their offense. 35 shots, 24 of them on goal for Maryland so far today. Princeton has just 15 shots, but 11 of them, of them have been on goal. Much more efficient, but not nearly as many opportunities. Molliver able to get goal side after coming around from behind X. Finds DeMeo. DeMeo trying to get onto his left hand. He got it dispossessed, though, and Princeton able to take it back the other way. Well, four guys closed on DeMeo as he got near the crease. Good defense there by Princeton. Tried to work into the traffic, but the turnover there for the Terps. And now here is Brown, the most recent goal scorer. Now the Tigers can take the air out of the ball just a little bit. With nine minutes to go in the third quarter and down by just three. After facing two unranked teams to start the season, this kicking off a stretch of five straight against top ten opposition, number one in the nation on the road. Extra pass comes to Ronda. Ronda has to circle back, gets its way to back behind X for Brown. And now English. Tied with Wisnowskis to lead all scorers with four. Tries to find the skip pass to the other side. It was read really well by Ray Hill. And Maryland comes away with the ball. Ride continuing to come on, though, for Princeton. Ray Hill able to get across the midfield line to clear it, though. Ray Hill able to find Donville. He's got four, and after that assist, Matt Ray Hill said, want to hear it a little bit more from the Maryland bench as the Terps restore their four-goal lead. Jonathan Donville with the goal. Maryland really just went right down the field here off of the turnover from Princeton. Terrific pass from the defenseman, Matt Rahill, finding Donville and a one-timer that Peters could do nothing about. 12th of the year for Donville. Graduate student from Ontario going low. And beating Eric Peters. Man, the Canadians have really been yeah. showing up today. Donville out of Ontario. He's got four goals. English out of Ontario. He's got four goals. And Donville has a dozen on the season now. Maryland awarded possession. And now have a chance for their largest lead of the day. It's been four a couple of times, but never five. It's Jack Brennan with a wing dodge down the left side. And now Maryland has really been starting to assert themselves at the face-off X. It was close for the first half, but now 14-7 to with the advantage. Owen Murphy tries to get goal side, forced to spin back around onto his right hand, gets the shot off, didn't get its way all the way through. And Jack Corris is first to pick it up. And now we'll get a whistle, and the referee is going to come together and have a conversation. Looks like it will stay with the Terps, though. And it will be Brennan who will re-trigger for Maryland. Brennan moving on to his right hand. Trying to work on Pedersen. Couldn't quite link up with Molliver. And Princeton right there on the spot to take it away. Bit of a ride coming on for Maryland. It hasn't been nearly as aggressive as Princeton's when Maryland gets the ball in their defensive half. Yeah, Princeton's always sending numbers forward when they have the ball. They're sending everybody they can to try to get goals. Here's Mackesy onto his left hand. A wild shot that flew up and over. Princeton first there to back it up, though. Good opportunity for Coulter Mackesy, but just couldn't quite get the separation he needed. And now here is Alex Slusher. So efficient coming into today. Shots on goal percentage of over 75%. He lost his stick that time, though. And Maryland's going to have possession. Fairman trying to clear. Lost it. And it flies out of bounds. It's going to go back the other way for Princeton. And once again, that do-or-die ride paying dividends. 
it is risky to be sure, but when it works, it works. It definitely works, and we have a timeout on the field as both teams will talk things over before Princeton's next possession. Maryland up by four. Tigers not going away anytime soon. We'll be right back on Big Ten Plus. The undisputed number one team in the nation, the Maryland Terrapins. Both teams undefeated to start off the season, and Princeton certainly acquitting themselves well in their first real test of the year. Down by four with the ball, looking to inch a little bit closer. After that, ride paid off and force the Maryland turnover. What does Princeton have out of the timeout? It's Brown working into the corner to set things up. Now he'll initiate. Backing down on his defender, trying to get topside, but Maycar forced it back. Here is Brown once again to X. With Maycar all over him. And forced the pass away to Bartero. Now English will work behind the cage on Puglisi. 25 seconds to shoot for the Tigers. Skip pass. Shot. Good save by McNaney. Denying Tommy Barnes. And now Maryland looking to move quickly in transition. Ray Hill looking for the pass off. Gets it. And now Maryland will slow things down with Keegan Khan. Here is Khan, who's been held off the board today. No goals, no assists yet for the transfer. Long has the one assist. Able to find DeMeo in stride. Wisnowskis has four goals, no assists yet so far for him. Finding Donville as that shot misses wide, and it's going to go the other way. Princeton first to the byline. Donville's slow to get up also. We'll keep an, eye on, on that. keep an eye on that to be sure. Number three in the white jersey. Excellent heads-up play by Ben Finley, though, the junior, to back things up first and give Princeton the ball. Bit of a homecoming for Ben Finley from Oakton, Virginia. Went to Gonzaga Prep in D.C. Got to be a thrill for him. Well, to be sure. All-American by Under Armour in 2019 in high school. Now into his junior campaign at Princeton. And you have to remember when you see those class listings for Princeton, freshmen and sophomores, first year playing for the Tigers after the Ivy League canceled everything last year. So it's two classes you have to get up to speed if you're Matt Madelon. Including the freshman Coulter Mackesy, who gives it up now and finds Brown. Brown working to a lot of traffic, is able to give it up, a bounce shot, and once again McNaney there to answer the call. Falls right back to a Tiger, though, and a shot and a goal. It was Brown, who was Johnny on the spot. He's got two, and Princeton's back within three. Man, the Tigers just do not want to go away. Every time Maryland gets the lead to four, Princeton has cut it back to three. And the second of the game for Chris Brown. It was just first to pick up the rebound, and... McNaney with a good initial save, but wasn't going to be able to deny the Tigers twice. It was Barnes who got that initial shot off. But off of the battle for the rebound, Maycar just working one on three against the Tigers, and Princeton's able to win the ensuing faceoff. And now here come the Tigers once again with a chance to bring it back to within two. That's Princeton's first faceoff win of the quarter. Here's Slusher getting over to Ronda. And catch with Brown, the most recent goal scorer. Christian Ronda has been held fairly quiet as he gets knocked to the ground, gets right back up. Ronda without a goal or assist, gets it off the slusher back behind the cage. Under three minutes to play in the third quarter. Slusher with a spin move to lose his defender. Puglisi able to pick it up though. Great defense there by Roman Puglisi. Forced Ronda to pass out of it to Brown. Maryland continuing to push the Tigers back. They're looking for a defensive stand to keep the lead at three. Here's Brown with the head of steam. Gives it up back behind the crease, and McNaney was able to read that pass and step up and intercept it. 
He just kind of snatched it. McNaney did. Heady play from the junior goalkeeper, who's got six saves to his eight goals allowed. Iglesi will get it off to Kyle Long. Now DeMeo coming onto the field. Maryland trying to create that little bit more separation. As we've mentioned, the Terps have led right from the word go, but haven't been able to fully run away with this game. All the way around it comes for DeMeo once again. Working onto that favored left hand. Now Wisnowskis with his four goals. Wisnowskis getting all the way towards the crease, and that was denied once again. Battle for the ball is on, and Finley's able to win it to his goalkeeper. Another nice play from Ben Finley to win the Tigers' possession. Gotta think, excellent defensively. Got to think Princeton's going to hold the ball here. This is probably the last good possession of the quarter if they want it to be. They don't want to give Maryland another opportunity before the end of the third quarter. About a 9 or 10 second difference between game clock and shot clock. So they can't quite hold for the final shot, but they can wind the clock down pretty considerably. And it's worth noting that that save off of the Wisnowskis shot is save number 15 for Eric Peters, wow. two off of his career high. And with a whole quarter plus to play. English gets back to his feet. But he was unable to get the pass to his intended target, Slusher, and Maryland with a chance to clear. All the way back it comes from McNaney, who is pressured hard by Brown and is able to get out of it. Long pass up ahead. Behrman blocked the ball with his body like a shortstop just to keep it in front of like him. A catcher, yeah. Is able to clear it. Nice job by Bubba Fairman, keeping it in front of him. And now Maryland can hold for the final shot with just over 20 seconds to go in the third quarter. Not the first time today Fairman's used his body. Remember, he had that block mm -hmm. in the first half. Off of a shot that looked like it was going goalward. Murphy has nine seconds to go. Owen Murphy trying to drive towards the cage pass, unable to link up with Keegan Kahn, and Princeton will be able to clear out of it, and that is how quarter number three will come to a close. Maryland up by three, but both teams with only two goals in that third quarter, and the Tigers not quite out of it just yet. Final 15 minutes of regulation coming up next on Big Ten Plus. Maryland with a three-goal lead, but not out of the woods yet to be sure. As Maryland wins the in opening face-off of the fourth quarter, and John Geppert coming all the way down the middle. Geppert with a bounce shot that just skipped wide. Nice idea. Geppert just couldn't put it home. Looking for the first goal of the season for the man with the long stick. Donville will be able to re-trigger. Here's DeMeo. We can dodge down the right side. Finds Eric Molliver, who's been fairly quiet today. The one assist. But continuously running the show. Another one of those players, along with Fairman, that we talked about that don't necessarily show up on the score sheet every day, but really vital to this Maryland attack. And also vital to the Maryland attack is Kyle Long and showing why right there. Maryland's got a dozen. Kyle Long fairly quiet so far. Not anymore on the score sheet with his first of the day. Maryland's got that four-goal lead again, and now we'll see if they can extend it or if Prince is going to chip it back. They have the, the four-goal lead at 8-4, to four, again at 10-6. to six. As we take one more look at the move from Kyle Long. So quick, that first yeah. step. It's a wrong-footed defender. Ensuing faceoff also won by Maryland. Luke Weirman coming all the way down, right down the middle. Weirman shoots and scores in the blink of an eye. Maryland up by five, largest lead of the day. Well, that answers that question. <laughs> Luke Weirman, almost a carbon copy of Gavin Ty's goal two weeks ago, all by himself, straight down the field. Second of the day for the faceoff man. And we've seen in the second half the faceoff discrepancy is favored Maryland a good bit. It was 10-7 at halftime. It's now 16-8 in favor of Maryland. Luke Weirman's really gotten better as the day's gone on. And Weirman has taken the lion's share of the face-offs, 22 of the 24. Gavin Ty, one for two on the other side. And Vara, as you mentioned, is really starting to struggle at yeah. that face-off X. 
He held his own in the first half for sure. Not a whole lot of options to turn to, though, for Matt Madelon, as we've talked about the personnel issues between the injuries and the COVID protocols. Princeton just fortunate to have Vara out of COVID protocols in time for this game, as Ben mentioned, holding face-off tryouts in the week during practice, and nobody really excelled as an option number two for the Tigers. Now Maryland with a chance to really put the gas pedal down in this fourth quarter. Here's Wisnowskis. Excellent pass to find Conright on the doorstep who had to back off with Billings all over him. Now here is Molliver once more. 15 seconds to shoot for Maryland. They have to move sooner rather than later. Skip pass intended for Wisnowskis. Wasn't able to get to it cleanly. Five seconds to shoot for Maryland as it's just flipped over towards a dangerous area and not going to get anywhere near on frame in time. And Princeton's going to be able to turn the ball over. Nice defense there from Princeton. Necessary stop as well for the Tigers to give themselves a chance. It's the season's... Uh, all-time series, rather, that has been dominated by the Terps. 31-12-1 and in a historic series as well. It dates back to 1927, one of the first five years that Maryland lacrosse existed. First time that these two teams have been able to link up since 2016. That game wasn't anywhere near as tight as this one. 17-5, that contest. A Colin Heacock hat trick as Maryland's able to take the ball away once again. John Geppert once more has been all over the place defensively for the Terps. And it finds its way to Molliver. This is certainly a venue as well that means quite a bit to Princeton. Capital and Field at Maryland Stadium. They beat the Terps in both the 1997 and 1998 NCAA championship games. 97, 1997 title game rather was here on the campus of the University of Maryland at what was then called Bird Stadium. Same facility, though, just renamed to Capital One Field at Maryland Stadium. As Donville's able to get the skip pass to Long, who rang it off of the iron. Boy, that took a huge deflection off of the, the goal. I don't know how it ended up all the way on the sideline. Well, that certainly atones to the velocity that Long put on that shot. It just defied physics. I don't understand that. But I don't understand physics either, so. <laughs> well, Princeton, pretty good school if you yeah. want to study something like that. Yeah. Just a little bit. And the men's lacrosse team representing the Tigers trying to get back into the swing of things. Down by five with 11 minutes to go. Certainly not out of it, but need to pick up the pace relatively soon. Brown. Finds Ronda. Ronda shoots and McNaney with a nice save. Rebound comes right back to the Tigers, though, with English. Now here's Vara, and he scores. Alexander Vardaro brings it back within four. Necessary goal there for Princeton to keep this game manageable for the time being. 10.41 to go. The Tigers not out of it yet, but they had to have that goal from Alexander Vardaro. Able to beat Matt Rahill and open up that shot, and now the Tigers back within four. We were talking about that, how important this venue is to Princeton. It's a weird statistic that the Tigers have more wins on this campus against other teams than they do against Maryland, having played so many NCAA tournament games here, not only against the Terps, but against other schools as well. So certainly plenty of history on this campus for this Princeton team and looking to make a little bit more by downing number one in the nation. It's an uphill battle to do that, to be sure, but they get the ball back off the faceoff win. And with 10 minutes to go, a chance to bring it back to within three. Here's Mackesy with it. Under Armour All-American out of high school, the freshman. Back for Tommy Barnes. Trying to open things up on his right hand. Working hard on Roman Puglisi, passes out of it. And another nice save by McNaney, working on his near post. And another important save to keep this a four-goal lead. 
Once again, that ride coming on for Princeton. They've lived by it. They've died by it as well, as Maryland's been able to get a couple on the break, but Tigers have been able to force a couple of turnovers, and Terps with only four seconds to clear. McNaney has to get rid of it, and he does. And a successful clear down to the wire, though, for the Terps. And now Kyle Long can start things up. A goal and an assist for the midfielder. Now here's DeMeo with just the one helper. Despite seven shots for Anthony DeMeo. Yeah, he's, he's had a lot of rockets. Most of them from quite a ways out as yeah. well. Here's Murphy who gets it back up top. 30 seconds to shoot for the Terps. Here's Long once again with that quick first step, trying to find Maltz inside. That's where Maltz makes his living, right there on the doorstep, but was unable to keep it alive. Excellent play from Wisnowskis wow. on the dive to keep it in between the lines. And the possession stays alive for the Terps. What a hustle play, and now Wisnowskis with a chance to be rewarded for it. Good save, rebound, another save. Wow. How did Peters keep that one out of the net? Couldn't tell you. That was unbelievable. The first save was excellent. The second save, you can put a big gold star next to. My word. And it stays a four-goal lead. It looked like the Maryland bench was starting to celebrate, thinking that one had to have gone in. Now on the other side, a goal for Princeton. Tommy Barnes, three-goal game, game on in College Park. What a sequence of events there. The two saves from Eric Peters, another one of those two-goal swings. And it leads to a goal for Princeton. Buckle up. Bo Pedersen with the assist, his first of the season. And we take one more look at this save sequence for Peters. The first save is excellent. The second one, DeMeo, the agility for Peters to get himself back up off of the ground and deny DeMeo. And then the other way, Tommy Barnes with the excellent shot going low. And now off the ensuing face off a ground ball is picked up by Maryland. But they're going to have to clear as the ride is going to come on hard for the Tigers. They're able to clear down the left side. This has been one of the more entertaining, high energy, three or four margin yeah, game sure. of the season. Sure. You know, if you look just at the score line, you'd say Maryland's just firmly in control the entire time. But Princeton has been battling hard. They've been forcing Maryland into some uncomfortable positions. And it certainly doesn't hurt that Eric Peters, with that incredible second save off of the rebound, tied his career high. And Maryland forces, or rather Princeton forces the Maryland turnover. Ensuing ground ball off of it, initially won by Princeton. Battle for it is on, and Maryland is able to outman Princeton there as Maltz is able to pick it up. Now here's Wisnowskis. And he will allow things to settle down a bit. Big scrum there. A couple of big hits. Logan Wisnowskis laid a blow on a Tiger. And now we do get a whistle and a stoppage of play. 7.13 to go in the fourth quarter. Maryland with their first two games here at Capital One Field at Maryland Stadium with big time wins an 8 and a 12 goal margin. It looked like there was a broken stick there on the field. And then they had to go on the road at Syracuse, got tested by the Orange, and now are getting another test here from number 18 team in the nation. After this one, Maryland doesn't get much easier at all. They have to go to Notre Dame for hosting Albany on the 12th of March, and then on the 19th is that huge national championship rematch against the Virginia Cavaliers. And while Maryland's definitely looking at that Virginia game, that Notre Dame game's not going to be easy at all. Irish have another really good squad here in 2022. And a rematch of that insane quarterfinal game this year in which Anthony DeMeo scored the game winner in overtime. Here's Wisnowskis right on the doorstep for Maltz. Not going to miss from there. There's that ball movement again that we've been talking about all afternoon for Maryland. Wisnowskis a very quick pass to Daniel Maltz. And as you said it, Ben, he makes his living right there on the doorstep. Able to put it in. And you could really sense that Maryland needed that mm -hmm. goal to stop what felt like a big surge of Princeton momentum as Wisnowskis gets his first assist of the day. That's now another five-point day for Logan Wisnowskis. Another day at the office for him. And Daniel Maltz gets on the score sheet for his fifth of the season. Important face-off here with under seven minutes to go. And 
Maryland nursing a four-goal cushion. It's won by Weirman, and Weirman will be able to clear it out. Maryland will not be in much of any rush on the offensive side of the ball. Up by four with six and a half to go. Four goals for Wisnowskis, four more for Donville. Luke Weirman has two. As Brendan in chance to get out of it, and he does, and finds Owen Murphy. Murphy not in any sort of rush with 40 on the shot clock. Plenty of time to work with. The transfer from Johns Hopkins making a switch across the rivalry and across the state. Finding Wisnowskis trying to get onto his left hand. Passes out of it. Shot and score. Jack Brennan with his third of the season. And a five goal cushion for Maryland. In a span of a couple of minutes has changed what looked like a Princeton surge into a Maryland resurgence. Yeah, now now it's danger time for Princeton. Down by five, just under six minutes to go. And Wisnowskis and great pass. And this is a really good shot by Jack Brennan. That's not an easy one, but he makes it work. Couple of quick assists for Logo Wisnowskis in succession. And now with under six minutes to go, Princeton needs the ball. And they need a couple of quick goals. But Luke Weirman's been dominating at the yeah. X. Second half, Luke one. Weirman's changed the entire game. Maryland Princeton were held level in the third quarter, two goals apiece, but Maryland's outscored the visitors in each of the other three quarters. It was 5-3 to three after one. It was 9-6 to six at the half. And Maryland's lead is five at the moment after outscoring Princeton 4-2 to two here in this fourth and final frame. Murphy able to spin away from his defender. Here's Brennan, the most recent goal scorer. Wisnowskis, the most prolific goal scorer. Back behind the cage, it comes for Keegan Kahn, who's been very quiet today. No goals, no assists, four shots. And certainly goes to show that even when Kahn isn't able to produce offensively, Maryland, certainly not in any sort of desert for goals. They've been able to find it in a lot of different ways. Chorus got taken to the ground. Feed inside. Couldn't quite link up with the intended target. Ten seconds to shoot. Trips have to hustle. Wisnowskis trying to get it in all the way in front. And Peters was able to snag that. And if that is credited as a save for Peters, that'll be a new career high. It is. 18 saves for Eric Peters. And a career day for him. And a big reason why Princeton's deficit is only five. He kept the Tigers in this game in the first he half. He really did. He did all he could, and, you know, sometimes when you're playing the number one team in the country, you're not going to get everything to go your way, but Eric Peters has, without a doubt, been the best player on the field today wearing black. Overtaking that 17 that he had against Dartmouth in 2019 and a big day against the number one team in the nation. And if you're Matt Madelon, yes, you're obviously not thrilled with a five-goal deficit, but number one team in the nation on the road with all those big games coming up. You have to feel pretty solid about the effort your team's put in today with all the adversity as well, the face-off X. They've played really tough. They've played really, really tough, and they have got to be thrilled looking at this game. Obviously, maybe not with the result as we wind down the final few minutes, but, I mean, Georgetown next week, then Rutgers, Penn, and Yale. Doesn't get any easier, but Princeton should be very proud of the effort they put in today. Climbing the hilltop to go up to Cooper Field at Georgetown is going to be a really difficult test. That Hoya team is loaded this year. As Wisnowskis thinks some of the fans thought that was going in, it actually rippled the side netting. And so Wisnowskis has denied his fifth goal of the day. Talk a little bit about Logan Wisnowskis. Four goals, two assists, and it doesn't seem like it's anything fairly remarkable. Just another nope. day for him. Logan Wisnowskis is just another day at the office for him. He just makes it look so easy. He just... It just comes to him. The game just kind of flows in his direction. And I'm sure he'll tell you that it's all about looking for his teammates. It's all about being the best teammate he can be. But he is just such a fun player to watch. A little bit of history for Wisnowskis in case you're joining us a bit late. Moving into second place all time in the Maryland points list. Passing Matt Rambo today on his second goal of the day. That shot goes wide. 
Logan McNaney, haven't mentioned him as much, of, obviously, in the course of the context of the goalkeeping because Peters has been off the charts, but solid day for Logan McNaney. Ten goals allowed to eight saves. He doesn't have to be fantastic. Just keep his team in the game long enough for that prolific Maryland offense to get going. It's got to be such a relief for Logan McNaney knowing he's got the goal scorers on his team that allows Maryland to get these leads so he doesn't have to be perfect or near perfect. He just has to be Logan McNaney, and that's exactly what he did today. Sitting at just about his average on the season, averaging 9.17 goals allowed per game. It's 10 at the moment. Terps can't quite hold for the final shot with under two minutes to go, but the Capital One field at Maryland Stadium crowd starting to sense that the number one team in the nation has done enough to get across the finish line here. Kind of an ugly game for Maryland, but in, in sports, sometimes that the best teams have to win ugly, and that's kind of what we've seen today. Princeton made it close several times. Maryland able to respond each time. And you know, for John Tillman and the Terps, this will certainly teach them quite a bit as well about how to win games, especially when you get into the later stage of the season, into sure. April, into May, into tournament-style games. And definitely a team that Maryland could see again come May. Mm -hmm, for sure. Don't take your eye off of this Princeton team. They're going to have plenty of chances mm -hmm. to bolster their resume, as we've already talked about the loaded schedule that they have coming up. The Ivy League, an excellent conference this year across the board in college lacrosse. Coming into today, four unbeaten teams in Princeton, Cornell, Harvard, and Yale. And any one of those teams could make a deep run in May. You got to think one of them's going to at the very least. Yeah, this is certainly a conference that is going to have quite a bit to say about what the NCAA tournament has in store, and one of them perhaps will end up in Memorial Day weekend. But Maryland will be able to run out the clock on this one. As the bench for the Terps start to sense it, start to get loud and urge their fans across the other side of the field to do so as well. Final 20 seconds here, and the number one team in the nation going to Face off against another ranked team and come away with another victory. Maryland going to extend their streak of wins. And for Princeton, a streak of over 1,000 days of real time since their last loss will come to a screeching halt. Seven straight wins for Princeton coming to an end as the ball is tossed up in the air. And that will do it. Number one stays unbeaten in College Park. Ben, your final thoughts of what was... A really enticing game for much of this game, and then Maryland able to pull away at the end. Yeah, very intriguing game, a lot of fun to watch, but you, you got to love the resilience of Maryland. Every time Princeton got it back to three, Maryland got it back to four, and it happened a good bit, but the Terps just rallied. Logan McNaney, a good game, and of course, Jonathan Donville and Logan Wisnowskis, the big goal scorers for the Terps today. Four each for Wisnowskis and Donville. On the other side of things, four goals for Sam English wasn't enough. 19 saves, a career high. For Eric Peters as Princeton moves down to 2-1. and one. Maryland, the undisputed number one team in the nation, moves to 4-0. Oh. That's just about going to do it for us from College Park, for my partner Ben Reitman and all of us at Big Ten Plus. You never get the chance to see. My name is Ben Curtis saying so long and see you real soon. Once again, your final score, Maryland 15, Princeton 10.